my place where I talk about knitting and sometimes sewing but again only knitting today and welcome back I recorded not that long ago but um I'm trying to maybe do this more often maybe shorter videos than my usual like hour long uh videos um I haven't talked to anybody today just been at home, I made sourdough, did some homework, did some Pilates, um, and was trying to do this earlier in the day, uh, but it's just very challenging, because I always want my hair to look nice, um, and that means that I have to like do everything before I sit down to record because I have to like work out and then wash my hair and then dry my hair and in the end it looks fine <laughs> it got very big when I dried it anyways I need a haircut I've been cutting my own hair for the past little while which I haven't maybe I haven't talked about this but I am hairdresser I cut hair part-time it's part of my income right now. Um, I went to hair school. I've been cutting hair since 2015. So, yeah. Just some facts about me. Maybe I'll talk about knitting now. I realized I forgot to put my rings on. And I always feel kind of naked without them. Um, okay. So, I guess I'll start talking about this finished thing. I still, I don't know about my camera angles, but whatever, I'll back up and show you. I'm just wearing my sweatpants, sorry. <laughs> I'm bonking into stuff. Um, so I finished it. I, I finished my Miserina. This is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. It's written as a uh, like a summer tea kind of pattern, but I extended it. Uh, made it a sweater. It's knit with Holzgarn, super soft. Um, I talked about it a lot in my last couple videos. Um, my like thoughts about Holst, but um, yeah, I just finished this. I think on Friday. Today is Tuesday, March fourteenth. I finished it on Friday, blocked it, and then I, on Sunday I went out for like a nice dinner with some friends, and um, I wanted to wear it, obviously, because I just finished it, and uh, it was nice to go out for like a nice evening, but we went out for Thai food. Um, anyways, so I got like, <laughs> I got Thai food on it, but you can't really see. And that's okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, the colors I used uh, in the super soft were nougat and black. Um, and what else can I say? I'm really happy with it. Um, so the first change I made was um, to cast on after the ribbing in the pattern. So I just ignored the rib in the pattern um, and I knit the sweater um, down and then I picked up and did the collar later. That was the first modification. And part of the reason I did that was because I wanted to make sure it wasn't too wide. Um, it's kind of written with a pretty wide neckline so I knew I'd have a little more control over making it smaller um, if I picked up and knit the collar later and also I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in the collar. Um, so that's why I did that. The second modification I made was 
not really a modification, but just a tweak, was to make sure that the chart was centered, um, which won't really make sense in, unless you see the pattern, but the way it's written, um, she kind of has you start at the beginning of round, um, oh, now I can't remember. But anyways, I just made sure to shift it over a couple of stitches. I think it was like four, no, I shifted it over two stitches so that this the beginning of round, which was at the back, was in the middle of this of one of the cables so that this center flower would be right in the center of the chest. So how it's written, she has you start the cable at the beginning of round, so it would have been just a little off center. So that was something that I read um, in a bunch of people's Ravelry project pages was that they had shifted it over, I think just by two stitches, just to make sure everything was perfectly centered. Um, so I did that. I mean, the yarn itself was a bit of a modification because it's written for like a sort of a summer, I think it's like a silk and linen blend or something, um, and I used the holst held double, so it's the same gauge, which was 20 stitches over four inches, I think, but um, it's denser than the original. Um, another modification I made was to um, catch my floats using ladderback jacquard, uh, which is a method for making sure your floats have nice tension. I'm wearing my kisses shirt again. <laughs> it's my favorite shirt. Um, so you can kind of see it here. You can see there's uh, an added stitch down the middle here and right here where they, there are these long, long floats in between the flowers. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was how I kept the tension uh, nice there. Instead of catching the floats, you sort of introduce a stitch um, that gets knitted as like a separate fabric behind uh, the main fabric. If you are interested in learning about ladder back jacquard, um, I will link, I had commented that someone had commented asking for advice on my last video um, and I put a link to, um, there's a tutorial on Isolde's website uh, that I used because I really like, I prefer a written tutorial with photos to a video tutorial personally. Um, usually I do a combination of both when I'm learning something but anyways I will link that down below because I thought it was useful. But if you just search it on YouTube, there's there's tons of stuff that comes up. Um, so I did the ladder back jacquard. What else? I chose to do, she has two options for the, the main body fabric um, for this texture. There's like an eyelet or a pearl bump fabric and I did the pearl bump. Um, and I continued it through the sleeves, um, which I made long sleeved. And I did that by, I kept the same number of stitches as for my size, which I think I knit size five. Um, let me check what size I knit. So I knit size six and I have a 49 inch bust. The size six was supposed to give me a 52 inch bust, which is only three inches of positive ease. And it feels like there's more, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's definitely more. <laughs> um, it's not an exact science. I wonder why. I wonder why. Anyways, whatever. Um, it's got more than three inches of positive ease, but I think the fit is really good and I'm happy with it. Um, so yeah, I knit. I picked up the number that she suggests for my size, size six. Um, and I started knitting and what I did for the sleeve decreases, I kind of looked at the body, Bonnie cardigan, um, which I finished in December and have worn a lot, um, and looked at the spacing of those decreases. And I think it was about every one and a half inches, there was a decrease round. So 
decreasing two stitches. And so that's what I did. Um, and it was kind of a gamble. I wasn't sure if it was going to work out. You can barely see, like, yeah, they're pretty hidden in there. But um, I'm really glad that it worked out on the first try. I was prepared to knit a sleeve and change my mind. But um, I think I did nine sets of decreases. Of course, that would change depending on your arm length. Um, and then I did a bit of a rapid decrease in the last round. What did I do here? Yeah, I knit two, knit two together all the way around. Um, and then I believe this was like 54 stitches um, for my cuff. Um, and I did the corrugated rib on the cuffs and on the collar. So I had done the collar first to make sure that I liked it because I really wanted to bring some of the black in at the edges. Um, because I like the idea of there being a, a bit of continuity. So I did a corrugated rib, which I've never done before. And I knew that corrugated rib didn't have, um, doesn't have as much stretch as regular rib. Um, so that's why I didn't go any smaller or larger because I knew it would just sort of hold its shape and not really expand or contract. Um, and then I kept the, the rolled edge like in the pattern. So it's, I think three three rows of plain stockinette and then it just rolls back on itself and I'm really happy with how that turned out everywhere so I'll just show you the corrugated rib yeah I think it looks really nice and I've never done corrugated rib before I said that already but um one thing that I did do was the first round, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but for the first round, I knit in the nougat and knit, I, I knit all the way around. So I didn't knit one purl one, I knitted one nougat, knit one black, so that there wouldn't be, um, so that the first line of purling wouldn't pick up the, the white loop from below. So I purled the black and I held, um, I, I paid attention to the color dominance and I held the, uh, the nougat, the white in the dominant position. I don't know if it made a huge difference, but that is what I did. Um, so I held it closer to my heart. I do, um, two stranded color work with both strands over my left finger. I knit continental picker style. Um, so I'll have the dominant color closer to my heart, the secondary color farther away. So I did want maybe the, um, the white to pop a bit more than the black. I didn't want the black to be too, too overwhelming. So I don't know, I had started one of the cuffs the wrong way, like with the black dominant, and I did notice and then have to rip back and correct myself, but it was fine. I think it would have made a tiny difference, probably not that notable, but I'm a perfectionist, so I had to do it. Um, yeah, so the, the length of the sleeves I think is good. I went a bit longer than I felt I initially wanted to, um, and I'm glad that I did because I think they are... Maybe I wanted them a bit longer, um, but I think they're they're fine. Um, I had heard that holes can shrink uh, vertically, and I don't think that that happened, especially in the body. Um, I don't find that there was shrinkage. I think I was talking to somebody in the comments on my last video about how one of the things that I didn't love about knitting with the super soft was that it's not very elastic. Like it really, I guess, cause it still has those spinning oils in it. Um, it's kind of like ropey and it doesn't bounce back. Um, which now that it's blocked, like I really like the fabric. It feels really nice. Um, I've only worn, I've worn it a couple days and there's no pills um, so far. Um, so I'm happy with the fabric blocked, but I didn't enjoy knitting with it because of that like ropiness and the, la the lack of elasticity. And so I think it makes sense to me um, that 
it wouldn't grow too much. Like a lot of yarns will, when blocked, you'll get like maybe another inch of length. Um, and it makes sense to me that, that the holst wouldn't do that because it doesn't have that elasticity um, before blocking when it's still got the spinning oils in it. So I was kind of planning around it maybe shrinking or just not growing at all when I knit the sleeves. Um, and I think the like, the extra length that I wanted is maybe just gone now because it's a full sweater, you know, like I feel like when you've got both sleeves on, it just, it's going to sit obviously a little differently than when you're just trying it on and it's one sleeve and maybe it's like getting pulled this way a little bit if that makes any sense. So I think that's where the length went. And also like when you bend your elbows and stuff, it pulls, pulls up. So it's still a good length. I'll stand up again and show you. Um, I have, <laughs> I have bread on my pants, um, bread dough. So yeah, I think it's a totally fine length. I wouldn't want it any shorter, but, um, it's like good for doing stuff too. They're not getting in the way. So yeah, I was planning on a bit longer. Maybe wanted them like an inch longer, but it's also fine. And I don't feel any need to like uh, go back and add more length. Although th these cuffs really didn't take any very long at all. I'm having trouble with my words today. I haven't spoken out loud yet, which is normal <laughs> for me. Um, yeah. I think that's everything about this. I'm glad so many people liked it, and I hope you like the finished, <laughs> the finished thing. I wish that um, my camera angle was such that you could see more of it. Oh, I'm sitting on my foot now. Oh, maybe that helps. But my foot will definitely fall asleep, so. Um, I feel like I have big hair today. That's alright. Okay, I feel like I just word word vomited um, about that. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I like this pattern. It was fun to do. The, the texture was fun to do. I'm happy with like the length. I had added a little extra. I had initially thought I would do it nine inches from the underarm, which is the length of my Udo pullover, which I like for like a cropped, kind of like swingy cropped sweater. Um, and then I added like a half inch. Oh, I did add a half inch in the ribbing um, just to be safe. So it called for a one inch ribbing, which I find I don't know, that just seems quite thin to me. Um, so I added that half inch in into the ribbing just in case. Mm. Yeah, that's about it. Recommend, I would recommend. Um, yeah, I don't have a ton of, I think this is my first I've knit some round yoke sweaters that were like a combination yoke, so like started as a round yoke and then had some raglan shaping underneath. Um, like the Anchor Sweater by Petite Knit, I've knit that, which has that style of yoke, and the Udo Pullover again has that same style of yoke. And I think maybe I prefer that to like the straight circular yoke, because like you can see this. I don't know. It just gets crumpled, but that's fine. Um, yeah, and I think it's really pretty and like striking, <laughs> striking looking, um, which is nice. And I don't really have uh, any other sweaters that are like this. So, and the lace is really nice. Yeah, it was just fun. It's just fun. If I did it again, which, I have this one, so I probably won't, but um, I would use probably different yarn, um, and that's about it.
though I do really, this is, it feels really nice. Um, it's just kind of the perfect, the perfect finished fabric. Um, so it's too bad that I didn't like the experience of knitting with it more. I mean, never say never. Maybe I, maybe I will use it again someday. I'm not against it. So yeah, that's my only finished, finished object. And mainly, that's the main thing I wanted to talk about today. Um, just because I was excited to show everybody. <laughs> um, I hope that you like it. But I do have a couple of, couple of things to update you on. I'm still working on this same sock as before. Um, this is still the first sock. Uh, just a little oops, um, faux cable pattern that I've been making up. There we go. I think I figured out my camera a bit better this this time around. I hope it looks a bit better. <laughs> um, yeah, faux cable sock knit in Alley Cat Yarns Ontario sock. Um, I did a flegal heel, which you can see my rowing out there. That's fine. Um, 64 stitch sock. I think it'll be good. I think I tried it on and it was nice. There's that heel. Yeah, nothing really to say about this one. Um, I would, I'm excited to finish it because, yeah, I'm still wearing my other socks of a similar blend a lot um and i'd like to see how like a kind of uh, how a texture um will wear in a sock format um this is a tiny little tiny little bag that i made that i like to keep a sock whip in um so there's that uh and i've kind of been distracted and not working on that too much um distracted. I've just been working on other things. The second thing that I started working on, okay, I, I mean, I'm still, I feel like I'm still in like a bit of a knitting funk. I'm just like not that, I'm excited for that canvas pullover that I'm wanting to knit, but for some reason I felt like I couldn't cast it on and I don't know why psychologically I'm struggling but I just I guess I'm feeling like there's unfinished things and I want to deal with those um but there I don't really have that many unfinished whips I don't know so I'm trying to go back and do some of the stuff I talked about um in my I think everything I knit in 2022 video uh I had said that I mentioned a couple sweaters that I wanted to alter a little bit mainly add length so this is what I did the other day instead of casting on a new sweater um, I started to add length to the daily pullover um, which is a pattern by Paula Pereira that I knit in the recommended yarn linen quill in the color kettle black um, and yeah I had to go back and watch one of my old videos to find out what needle size I was using because I didn't, I had written it down, but I didn't believe what I'd written down, which it turns out it was right. Um, so weird choice. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see where I started. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with gauge, but I think that it will block out. Um, initially what I tried to do because I didn't want to redo the, the one by one rib at the bottom because there's it's a pretty deep hem knit in one by one rib and I'm knitting the main body on a three millimeter which means that I did the rib I didn't write this down of course but the rib was likely on a 2.5 millimeter which is annoying um, to knit all of that ribbing but I tried really hard to do sweater surgery on this um, what I tried to do was 
pick up one of the plain rounds of knit above, well now I'm knitting, but um, so I tried to pick up a round of stitches above the ribbing. And then I was going to pick up another round above that and then cut in between, separate them, add length to the body, and then kitchener stitch the ribbing back on. And I tried to do this and I think it would have worked. It was tricky because the yarn was black. Um, I was trying to do it like I made sure to try and do it in the daylight like with my I have like a ring light here that I use for filming but also for when I'm doing like little things that need lots of light. Um, I tried to use that but the, the main issue that I ran into, other than the fact that it was black and I wasn't sure I was always picking up the right round of stitches, um, was that there were short rows in the original pattern uh, at the back to like lower the back hem a little bit, um, which in retrospect, when it was done, I didn't think that I needed. Often I find the short rows in patterns to be a bit of overkill and I wonder why that is it must just be something about the shape of my body I find like even my Udo pullover um, I find that a bit low in the back and that I remember had short rows at the back of the neck and then under the yoke as well um, so if I were to do that again I would have taken out those short rows under the yoke and this actually that might have been another, I think I might have done less short rows in this sweater um, than called for, but I didn't write that down. But I think I remember that being mentioned um, in some project pages. So yeah, that also made it hard to do the surgery <laughs> on it because um, I was running into those double stitches um, and I can't remember if I did German short rows or wrap and turns whatever anyways it, it made it pretty much impossible to do that and after trying I probably tried for like over an hour <laughs> um, I decided that it was best to just suck it up and do the ribbing again um, the other issue with that was that I had done a sewn bind off, which I, I just enjoy doing a, a sewn bind off. I don't think it's a pain, but I was like, that's a lot of work to do again. And, um, I didn't, mainly it was that I didn't want to, or think I could unpick it. I'm sure I've unpicked one before, but I wasn't about to do it on like the full body so I just felt like I didn't want to waste the sewn bind off so I would have preferred to do this sweater surgery but in the end I decided to just cut off the sewn bind off um, which I think is something somebody recommended in the comments just snipping it off instead of un, um, unpicking it so I just went around and cut that little bit off not too precisely, um, and then I unwound all of it uh, until I got to the short rows. I unwound the short rows, and then I picked back up and kept going. So when when I hold it up like that, you can't really see. You can kind of see when I scrunch it where where I started. So um, I think I put this on obviously before I unraveled it and I measured the front how much longer I would like it to be and it was very short so I think that I'm going to add when I measured it was kind of like three and a half inches but that seems like a lot so I might just add three inches we'll see how I'm feeling um, and I'll probably try it on I will try it on <laughs> uh, before I start the ribbing just to make sure that I'm happy with, with the length that I've added. Um, I think that part of the reason 
I didn't try the last, try it on the last time. Part of the reason it was too short is that I did not try it on. And I think that I did not try it on because it was not straightforward to do. Like I, I often use the, uh, the knitting barber cords to try stuff on, but those are too, kind of too thick for a fingering weight sweater. Um, so I think I just went for it and decided to start the ribbing, which in retrospect is silly. Um, cause I have lots of yarn. It wasn't like I was lacking in yarn. Um, so yeah, I feel like that was a bit of a ramble, but, uh, that's what I'm doing now. And I'm proud of myself <laughs> for actually doing what I said I was going to do. And I'm a bit sad I haven't done this sooner because I just think this sweater will be really nice to wear. I have worn it once or twice, I think. Um, but again, it was just too short. Um, yeah, and I think it'll just be more useful. Um, it's just like, I, I like a cropped thing. But the style of it just didn't sort of mesh with me for how cropped it was. Like, it was like showing belly cropped, which is fine. I don't mind. But um, it just didn't fit with, like, the v-neck. It felt a little more, like, a little more formal than, like, showing your tummy cropped. I don't know. Anyways... Ugh, I can talk about things forever. So now I'm just knitting. So yeah, this is the I think I'm gonna another thing that's annoying is I'm gonna re-soak. This was all the yarn from the rib. And I think I'm going to wash it because it's pretty pretty kinky. Um and just to ensure a better result. Although I have enough to like re-knit the rest um without without probably dealing with that yarn um because I actually have this my size in this sweater called for four skeins and I had bought five by accident um just thinking that I needed five but I only needed four but I really only used three um so I might break into the fourth skein to finish this and then I have a whole other skein which I kind of have plans for. I think I'll do like a, a shawl or something similar um, eventually. But um, yeah, right now I'm liking the idea of finishing up things, which does bring me to say that I have been working on the merit. It's right here. <laughs> I am working on the button bands. I won't talk about it now because my plan is to finish it. I want to finish it within the next couple of weeks and then hopefully record a video talking about it, which I can post about two weeks from now. That is my general plan. My plans often don't go um, how I would like them to, <laughs> but that's what I'm thinking right now. So I won't talk about that, um, but I think I will feel a weight lifted once I finally finish that. Um, and yeah, I just, every time I thought about casting on something new, I was just reminded of all these unfinished things and sewing too. I feel like I have a lot of sewing ideas and half finished projects that are kind of weighing on me. So right now I'm think I'm just rambling so that I can keep knitting. Um, but I will show you one last thing. Um, that I was working on, so, um, which is kind of like an older, well, it's, it is an older whip, so, a few more inches, like an inch and a half to go, at least, on this, um, and then it'll be so much more wearable, and yeah, if you want to see how that looked on me, you can watch my everything I knit in 2022 video, uh, where I put it on and you can see how short it was. <laughs> um, and okay. The other thing that I started working on, um, 
was a project that I started in, I think probably two years ago. Um, and it was the Spring Intentions Shawl by Cat Weaver, um, who has a podcast here on YouTube, which I'm sure you know about. Um, ooh, and this was, uh, <laughs> I'm just dropping things. I'll just hold it. Um, this was a shawl she had designed and then ran um, a knit along for in the spring of 2021, I believe. Yeah, because I was at, I was living in Ottawa with my mom at the time for a bit. Um, and she paired up with uh, Whistle Bear to make kits for this shawl. Uh, and I bought a kit and I joined the knit along, um, uh, which I really liked the idea of. And it, she sort of released uh, a new chunk of the shawl every week and there was some writing that she added to it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was like a spring, a spring event. Um, and I was really excited about it and I was like following along and having a great time and then there was something wrong with my gauge and I had to rip back and then I was behind and then um, my sort of enthusiasm for the knit along uh, waned. <laughs> um, so I never finished it and it's sat pretty much half finished since then. Um, like, yeah, I probably abandoned it about a month in. Um, but I remember really liking the yarn. Uh, and I pulled it back out and I was weighing the yarn and looking at how much I had and I think my gauge was still too big um, and the amounts of yarn in the kit that I bought from Whistle Bear were pretty precise. Um, so I was looking at it and thinking even if I continued the shawl how it was, because um, it was halfway finished, um, I still would probably have run out of yarn. Um, and then I thought, oh, that would be fine. Um, you could just make some sections shorter and just like take out parts. Um, and then my little like lizardy perfection brain wouldn't let me do that. Um, so I frogged the whole thing the other day and restarted. So this is how much I have. <laughs> I thought a lot about the yarn and whether I whether this was the project I actually wanted to knit. And I just think that it is, and it looks really nice, and I really like the colors that I chose. Um, so this is the Whistle Bear Cheviot Marsh yarn. And I feel like that's pretty true to the color. Um, and so I have this... <laughs> My, my favorite cat bag is just full of all of the colors and I don't know their names, but um, I had this white, this was my main color, um, a kind of soft, um, I feel like my lighting, I don't know, it's kind of getting washed out there, but like a soft millennial pink kind of, maybe in comparison, you can kind of see it looks a little bit pinker in comparison. I had this, oh, this is the frogged green, a light green, a dark green, this like light gray, uh oh, I'm gonna regret taking all these out, a dark gray, um, <laughs> oh no, this is the dark gray, this is the medium gray, so this was my palette. I don't know how I'm going to show you this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's literally no way. Oh no, my screen fell asleep. Wait, what if I do two, two hands? <laughs> why am I, why am I trying? Wait, okay, I'm kind of gripping them. Um, this is the palette, which... I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, like I said, this is, it's later in the day than I wanted it to be. Um, the pink is a little more pink in person. But yeah, this is what I had planned on, and I really like all the colors together. 
Um, and I think it would be a nice item to have, a nice object to have item. <laughs> and she also has you in the pattern make a little swatch to like plan out your colors. Um, and this was my little swatch. Um, so I've started ooh, from this end. So you see the white, the pink. Um, and I don't know if that's showing. It's not a very um, <laughs> beautifully uh, prepared little test swatch here, but it works. Um, yeah, it's, the camera's not really picking up on the subtle difference between that very, the very light gray and the white. You can kind of see it more here, but yeah, so that's my like color progression. Um, so I've started again, and I'm starting, like, I've started knitting with the unfrogged yarn, um, just so that I have a better result, and then I think... It's gonna be a lot of work, but I might, yeah, re-soak all of the frogged yarn. Another issue with this was that when I had moths, they were in here. So there's a couple like little breaks in the yarn. And that was another reason I didn't touch it because I just was like, I can't, I can't deal. Um, yeah, so. I don't know if I need to, maybe keeping this recently frogged yarn in the balls is enough tension to make them, to make the yarn like relax a little bit and not be as kinky, I'm not sure. Um, if you have any thoughts on whether or not I should soak this, let me know. I don't want to soak it. Bear in mind that I don't want to. <laughs> Um, but let me know if you think that I should, I feel like I should. There's just a few, yeah, I've got like these ones, it's just, it would be a bit of an undertaking. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's in tiny little balls. Um. So it's a bit of a mess, but I'm trying to keep track of the weight uh, of things so that I know how much I'm using per row. Um, yeah, so we'll see. If, if it doesn't work this time, then I give up. You know, when sometimes projects are just a little cursed um, and they don't work out, but I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> and I think it will be pretty and it's really nice to knit on so I feel like I'm back to my <laughs> my fingering weight ways <laughs> um, I'm knitting this now on she calls for 3.25 in the pattern uh, 3.25 millimeter needles in the pattern so I was knitting on 2.75s um, the last time around uh, and now I'm on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is confusing because the gauge is the same as the daily pullover, I think, 24 stitches over four inches. But I think because this is a combination of knits and pearls, um, many of the, the rows are knits and pearls. Uh, I think that makes the gauge a little looser, like it would with rib, which is why we go down in needle size for rib. Um, yeah, so hopefully that will be a nice thing eventually. Um, hopefully it, I don't screw it up. I did mess up. <laughs> even, yeah, even casting on the new one. I forgot to do the I-cord edge. There's this nice I-cord edge you can kind of see. Um, and I forgot to do it the first time I cast on after frogging. And then I had even done a few rows and I was like, Ugh. and the perfectionist 
in me made me rip it back again. And then even I like told myself to check the pattern, but then I did the, the I cord wrong on this side. And you really, you can kind of see at the bottom there, I messed up what side of the, um, what side I was doing it on. Anyways, and that's bugging me, but you know what? No one will ever notice. I will never notice um, when I'm wearing it. So we're letting that one go. This is me telling myself. Um, I think that, yeah, I try and take note of when I'm feeling uh, really stressed out by like perfectionism and wanting things to be exactly right. Um, I think that is something that happens to me when I have less energy and when I'm feeling less well. Um, I can really get like in my head and stuck on things. And so I'm trying to notice when that happens. Um, and I think that's maybe why I haven't been as excited about knitting because that is happening. Um, and I think it's good maybe to take a little step back. Um, and yeah, maybe not start some new things, but I don't know. I really want to cast stuff on and I'm just not letting myself and I don't know why. Why? What am I doing? What is going on? Um, yeah, but I guess that's all I have now. Um, for now. <laughs> I feel like I made, made weird sentences today, but, uh, I should go because my friend Kay is coming over um, because they locked themselves out of their house and I have their keys and I'm going to make them dinner um, also just because and we're going to finish my puzzle I have a puzzle on the go um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed that um, hopefully I'll be back in two weeks with a finished Marit cardigan and a video to show you and talk about it because I feel like similarly to this I have a lot of things to say um look at my nice sweater good job Claire <sighs> sometimes you just need someone to tell you you're doing a good job um and sometimes you need that person to be yourself yeah I hope you are having a good sort of end of winter if you're in the northern hemisphere end of summer in the southern hemisphere anyways let me know what you're knitting uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, thank you for watching I hope you liked it <laughs> and talk to you soon okay bye <laughs>